Welcome back guys to part number two of Project Saggy Bottom. This is where I take a perfectly good Ninja H2 and I oldify it. I make it more suitable for an old fart like me to make it a little bit more comfortable. So in the last episode we installed the Louis Moto seat cover and gel insert into the bike. Since you've been away I've also fitted some easy grip tank pads as well. I didn't really want to fit tank pads on here, but when I rode the bike, I found myself not squeezing the tank to avoid scratching, you know, this tank, because the new one of these tanks is two and a half thousand pounds. I know, because I've broken one in the past. So whenever I ride the bike, I try and avoid gripping the tank, which just puts more weight on your wrist. So it's counterproductive and makes the bike more uncomfortable. So I've bitten the bullet and I've also fitted some easy grip tank pads to the bike. And the remaining job for today is to fit the 20 millimeter Kawasaki risers. So without further ado, grab yourself a cuppa and Chopsy, roll the intro. So I've managed to get my socket, but there is a bit of a problem on the H2. They don't make it easy, Kawasaki. I, 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 whenever I do a job on this bike, it's always a little bit of a pain in the ass. I don't know why. There's tamper proof screws and everything all over this thing. They, Kawasaki don't want you playing with their motorcycles, but let me show you what the problem with the socket is. Bloody pain in the bum. Problem is the nut is recessed and my socket is borderline too wide to go into the recess. What a pain in the bum. If I measure my socket outside diameter, it is 48 millimeters. The diameter of the hole at its widest point, which is about there, it's 48.4 <laughs> millimeters. You see the problem? Me, me, my socket's bigger than me hole. Why is nothing ever simple? Why can't you just buy a socket? It fits and you do your job. I mean, what is with all this faffing? I don't know if it's even worth attempting to, you know, grind the socket down a little bit. So before it was just over 48. Now we're 47.5, can you see that? 47.5, so now we should fit within that recess quite nicely. What I'm gonna do, just to avoid damaging the socket, I'm gonna put my rubber glove over it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Bingo. Okay, so the next job is to get the top yoke off. The steering damper is also attached to the top yoke. That's also got tamper-proof bolts, so I can't disconnect the steering damper from the top yoke. So I'm gonna take it all off as in one piece um, and then just sort of lay it and zip tie it out of the way a little bit. So I've got to undo the clamps here and here, which is holding the top yoke on. Okay, so that's the levers removed on both sides. Now with these two out, is it going to just lift out? Oh, come on. I've just checked the manual and there's actually another bolt under here, bolting the riser on from the bottom. So I've got to drop both, both those off as well. I think I'm just going to have to put this to one side slightly. Like that. And then just do one riser at a time. Okay, I'm going to tackle each of the clip-ons separately, starting with the left-hand side, because I'm just going to leave all of this pushed to one side, because all the ignition's attached, the steering damper I can't get off, so let's just push that one side and to treat each one of these separately and remove and replace the new one. So first thing, get off the switch gear. Um, I've got the indicator wiring coming out of the handlebars here, because I drilled it, if you remember. So I've got to disconnect the indicators, which I think is under here somewhere, the indicators plug in. And uh, yeah, let's whip this clip on off. These are the Rizima bar end indicators. And I think these twist and come out yet yeah, like that. And then you've got quite, pull a bit of wire through. And then you've got a nut here to undo and leave enough to uh, 
connect it back up again later. Pull through. Yeah, like that. Here we go. You can see one of them is slightly higher than the others. It's only 10 mil, it's 20 mil, 20 mil higher these will be. You can see the beauty of these being official cowers, you know, made for the bike is they come with all the correct fixings, you know, the holes pre-drilled for where the switch gear attaches to, you know, obviously 100% original, 100% identical to the standard ones, but just 20 mil higher. I don't know why they didn't put these on standard really for Not this everyone bike. Is old and, and then decrepit. have the dropped ones as an optional sort of race option. But there we go, we've got them anyway. Okay, so that's the left hand risers laid next to each other. If I push them down, you can see the difference in height. Look, these are the modified ones and these are the original. So these are upside down. So of course that will be pointing down on that. the bike. You can see, yeah, you know, they're a fair bit higher, the new ones compared to the old ones. And I'm hoping that little bit will just give us that extra little bit of comfort, which will make all the difference. Now what I have to do before we fit them is drill the hole I had for my indicator wires to fit through. So a little bit more complicated for me, it's got these bloody indicator wires that go through. So that's the hole I drilled on the originals. I'm just gonna add a similar hole. Time to make some noise. That'll do, pig. Oh, I made this. I've drilled me hole. Me hole's ready. Now I've got to feed all my indicator wire back through the handlebar you know, get the grip back on, just start to, and then solder this back in, solder the wiring back in here. Oh, it's a bit of a faff this. This is quite a big, quite a big job this really. I mean, it sounds easy, but when you actually come to do it and you want to be really careful, this is taking quite, you know, this has taken so far two and a half hours to get to this point, would you believe? Crazy. I did manage just to pull off the standard grip, so that was handy. I may use a, quite a good tips for putting grips back on. Before I've used hairspray, so spray a bit of hairspray, and as soon as the hairspray goes off, it sort of grips the grips the grip. So I use a bit of hairspray. It's, hairspray is not something I normally keep in, but uh, I have to go and borrow Mrs. Chopsy. It'd be easier to poke in and get out. I can't do that because it's attached this end. So I'm going to put some wires in and tape it on and try and pull it through because I think it's the best bet. Where's my spare bits of wire? I hate this cupboard. Has anyone else got a cupboard of doom in their garage? Whenever you go in it, you have to sort yourself up to find things. Aha! That's it. Get back in there, you know. Oh, I just fell off. Hey. Bingo. Ah, oh, idiot. I forgot to thread it through that. <laughs> Let's do it again now. Suckers. Yeah, got him. Oh, I've got to get the grip on as well. It's got to slide through the grip as well, isn't it? <laughs> oh, my idiot. God. Okay, I've got everything wound through in the correct order now. So I'm just going to fix the grip on now. Super soft hairspray. Previous experience that gives it a bit of something to slide on, and also once that goes off, it will hold it in place. So a little top tip. So I'm just putting the switch gear all back onto the uh, the clip on now before I bolt it in place. Oh yes, looking sexy. I'm not going to tighten any of this up completely because until the handlebars are in the right position. I may have to adjust all this. There's my two indicator wires ready to be connected up again in a minute, but I've sold all at the same time and I've got the other side ready. So now let's repeat for the other side. Because I've got to run the wire through the twist grip, I'm going to do this one attached to the bike so I don't forget to thread it through here or anything. So it's going to be a little bit more tricky to do this on the bike, but uh, let's give it a whirl. Okay, so I've got everything back on, not in its exact position, but back on. I've got my wires pulled through. I need to solder these back on. 
But I think what I'm going to do is actually get now the, the top yoke back in position, get these bars in the right position, and then there's just the soldering left to do, which is relatively minor. So the next job really is just to get all of this back where it wants to be. <laughs> these bolts underneath are actually Loctited, so it looks like it's actually red Loctite. I ain't got any red, so it'll have to be blue. Next step to make sure everything, you know, this top yoke is seated properly. Before I tighten up the bars here, I'm going to torque down this top nut and then at least we know the, the yoke is down as far as it needs to go. And then we'll bring the risers up to meet it, if you see what I mean. Mavis, what's the torque setting for the top nut bolt? 78 Newton meters. 78 Newton meters, okay. 78 Newton meters. <laughs> Now we just have to get the left side also bolted in and uh, yeah, we're getting close. We are getting very, very close now. Finishing touches. Well, that's everything back together. I've soldered on the indicators. They work, believe it or not. Hang on, let me show you. We have flasheroos in the indicators, so that's good. That all works. I just need to position that a bit better way up, actually. I've got the bright end facing back, so I just need to twist that around. <laughs> but both of them work, both resoldered. So what I'm going to do now is just put the uh, final bits of trim back on the bike, and then we'll see how comfortable it is when it's on the ground and adjust the lever position where I want them, and uh, yeah, see if it was worth all that time and effort. That took me good three hours to three and a half hours to do that another hour because of faffing with cameras and recording but it's quite an evolved job and you've got to be honest, be really careful that you don't slip and scratch anything so uh it's always a bit intense when working on this bike <laughs> but let's get it all back together and see what the comfort's like Ooh. before the trim pieces go back just look at the quality of the welds on the h2 i mean the quality of this bike where, you know, the welds and everything is just incredible. These are actually hand, hand assembled. I forgot these are all hand built, the H2s, but you can just see there's extra attention to detail gone into every part of the bike for down to the welds and everything. It, it is an incredible machine. Anyway, let's get it back together. The big test, the big test getting on. Oh, the seat definitely feels nicer. The bars, yeah, they're higher. Still limp forward a little bit, but you can, I can definitely notice that is more comfortable. I've adjusted the levers where I want them. Because the bar's a little bit higher, it gives me the option to point the levers down a little bit. Because really what you want, you want your levers in line with your hands when your hands are outstretched. So, you know, you're not having to have your hands like that to pull levers. So I may drop that. They're pretty good, actually. They're pretty well lined up with my hands. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's much more comfortable. The grips are nice, having something to get my legs wrapped around. Yeah, a bit of uh, extra grip there. So I can grip the tank now without having to worry about scratching the tank. That is much better. That is much better. Time will tell with the seat if it's going to be much more. It definitely feels better initially, but it's after you've been riding for 45 minutes. How does your ass feel? But I am, uh, <laughs> I love it. Properly happy with that. Can't wait for the spring now. Get out, test. I'm not going out on these wet roads on this. You've got to be joking. We'll have to wait until the spring until we go and ride. But initial impressions, it is lovely. Just what I wanted. Massive thanks to Wheels Motorcycles for sourcing these clip-ons, by the way. If you want a set of these, I'll put the part numbers in the description. Contact Wheels, hopefully they can, there's enough stock of these left because that is a definite improvement on the bike. And it's not too high that it looks silly. It looks standard. So uh, I'm really happy with that. Thanks for watching guys. Next year, it's gonna be fantastic on this. See you later on.